the World Health Organization Disability Assessment Schedule, the WHODAS-2, was judged by the DSM-5 Disability Study Group to be the best current measure of disability for routine clinical use. It's based on the International Classification of Functioning Disability in Health. It's applicable to patients with any health condition. And the scale's scoring information is included in Section 3 of DSM-5. And so that's the download uh, to get a copy of the HUDAS. And so I just brought several copies. The HUDAS is uh, 36 items. Um, simple scoring, it basically says, is this the case? From none, one, all the way up through to extreme or cannot do, and, and there are a variety of areas. There's, an interesting question is the idea of scoring, right? So if you take a standard item like understanding and communicating, which is the first item you'll see as you pass that around, it says concentrating on doing something for 10 minutes. Think about that for a second. Concentrate on doing something for 10 minutes. How much difficulty did you have concentrating on doing something for 10 minutes? Not counting this workshop, which is a separate kind of thing, right? <laughs> is, is it none? I've had no difficulty. Mild, moderate, severe, or extreme, or cannot do it all. It's those ratings on a whole variety of levels of sort of function. The trick is the idea of scoring, though. It's a problem. The idea that what you have is a measure where you would presumably get a score. You would get a score for the HUDAS, and that score would tell you basically what the average was, whether the person could or couldn't do these things. And while it's helpful to know that the person had difficulty, etc., what we don't know is if you get a 56 on the HUDAS, what does that mean? Okay. So we have a measure of, uh, we have a measure of perfectionism that we've uh, published. And it basically says, you know, like, how high are your standards? Like, really high or not so high? And if you don't meet your standards, like, how much trouble do you have? Like, a lot of trouble or not so much trouble? And we've given it to a whole bunch of people. And we know that if you got a 36 on our measure, we know that's higher than a 35. <laughs> we know it's not as high as a 38. But we don't know what a 36 really means. We know that if you got a 36 on this and you got a 15 on the self-esteem scale and the person who got a 38 got a 13 on the self-esteem scale, we know that there's an inverse correlation. The higher your score on one thing, the lower your score on some other thing. We can look at those relationships. But to say you got a 36 means, well, nothing. You got a 36 because we have no context because we have no norms. When you do intelligence testing and et cetera, you know that you get 105, you think, well, we know what that is. 105 is higher than 104, and we know it's within the range of normal IQ. Normal because we've done these large-scale studies. We don't have HUDAS norms for the simple scoring. There is a complex scoring system that's available from the World Health Organization. It uses a single item response theory, and item response theory is the new statistical method that's sort of taken, if you remember, factor analysis from when you were in grad school, et cetera, and now we're using item response theory. Item response theory uses a number of logarithms to look at the relationships, et cetera. And when I say that out loud, I exhaust my knowledge of the topic, okay? <laughs> That's all I got on item response theory, except I know the office of the person who specializes it in my university, okay? All that is to say, it's a relatively complex formula that, again, if you use the complex scoring that's available from the World Health Organization, you could look for population norms for that particular score. But that would be an extra step, and those are not provided in the DSM-5. So one of the difficulties with the WHODAS is that you'll know the client got a 56. We have some sense of that because it would be an average rating of, say, 2.1, which suggests that the client was having mild difficulty with any number of these levels of disability or dysfunction. And that would be helpful for us to think about, but we won't be able to say that it's within the range of normal or abnormal because we don't have norms for the WHODAS at all.